Welcome to the Redemption Podcast. This is take two of our podcast. We had to record the entire thing and then had issues with the file, so we're, we're going at it again, uh, new and improved. Uh, and so uh, this is our Redemption Podcast. Uh, I, I mentioned in the la- in the first take, and I'll mention it again, that um, kind of the way this podcast is going to work is we're hoping to have it up uh, roughly every two weeks, and uh, we're going to have... Uh, Josh and Joel and myself, uh, that that crew will be once a month, and then once a month we will have special guests on, and we will have uh, different kind of discussions with different people in our church and, and different special guests. So today we have two special guests. Uh, we have two ladies from our young adults ministry who also serve in our youth group who are just super awesome fiery women of God, and so they're here with me today to talk about relationships and marriage and uh, lack thereof, and so uh, I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves this morning. So, Karina, what is your name, and tell us a little bit about you. Uh, Well, my name is Karina. (laughs) Um, My name's Karina, and I am a mom of three kids, and I um, am just so fun and really outgoing, <laughs> and I just love people. And I mean, I could just talk about myself forever, but I'm gonna pass. Are pass you it like off. trying to like this is like your pitch to like somebody? I mean, if, if anybody's interested, if anybody's just... listening and is interested, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like it. My okay. number is just kidding. You can t- you can contact Josh for that. I'll put it in the description <laughs> for sure. Um. Um, my name is Hannah. I am uh, twenty seven years old. I'm not single. And, <laughs> and Sorry. <laughs> um, I have been part of Redemption, which used to be Church of the Living Christ, since I was about four years old, and so been here for a, a long time. And uh, yeah, just excited to. Talk about all relationship things today. All the great things. Right. <laughs> CLC. Those mm-hmm. were the days. OG. I wasn't there, uh, but those days. That's what I've heard. Yep. Um, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for for joining me today. I think it's going to be a really good conversation, a, a needed one. You know, I think um, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday about how just through the whole COVID um, crisis and when, it, when life really slowed down for everybody, it was an interesting thing with like. Um, I think couples were tested and challenged in a lot of ways. And Mm -hmm. I know like for Emily and I, one of the biggest things was like when COVID first hit, all of a sudden I went from being at work five days a week all through the day to being at home, which had its, obviously it's pros, you know, and of course like Emily wants me, always wants me to be home more often. However, uh, then not you that home. often. <laughs> <laughs> then you were home more yeah, often. <laughs> yeah. And so it like created some challenge, some interesting, you know, dynamics and challenges and stuff. So it's been an interesting time for relationships. I think relationships have been put under a lot of stress and some of it's been good stress. Some of it's not been. Yeah. Um, but I want to ask, you know, kind of in the context of relationships, but even more so just generally as far as, you know, your life experience and your, um, through this whole year, you know, the experiences this year, I'm going to ask this the question to every guest that we have on. Who are you today? Hmm. Karina, who are you today? Who am I today? <laughs> um, I did not warn them about this because I wanted <laughs> candid answers. I, um, I am a daughter of the king, first and foremost. <laughs> yeah, right? Such a PC um, answer. I know, but it's true, <laughs> right? Like, if that's not where you're grounded first, then who are you? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. I would say I'm a daughter of the king first. I'd say I'm a mom, um, a friend, a daughter, mm-hmm. a sister. Who am I today? Someone that I can appreciate and enjoy versus not very long ago. Mm. That's a great answer. I know. Yeah. I know. Good, good I luck, like Hannah. Yeah. No, you took my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Just be like ditto. Uh, <laughs> um, today, I... Well, first of all, I'm very tired. It's so early. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, first, like Karina said, you're, we're a daughter of the king. Um, but I think... Over the last year or so, I've just become more confident in myself and more 
independent and, um, and I just, I know my, my worth and, um, yeah, just, I know who I am now. Yeah. I am That's who good. I am. <laughs> yeah. And both of you guys are amazing people and, you know, I've, I've seen both of you grow a lot even since I've known you, let alone, and I don't know about before, but, uh, I think both of you have pretty interesting stories when it comes to relationships. Um, you both have a lot of experience with relationships, a lot of bad, a lot of good, uh, and different dynamics of, of all of those things. And so um, I'm going to ask, I'll start with Hannah on this one. I'll give Karina a little bit of a break. Uh, but you know, I just want to ask, like, what's your story? You know, So you are recently engaged, congratulations, uh, to a, an amazing man of God that we all uh, love very dearly. Mm-hmm. And so you're recently engaged, but... I know there was a, a lot, a lot of years and a long process to lead to that. Mm-hmm. And so, what's kind of you know, what's that story like? What's your story as far as how did you get, end up here? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm engaged, and for some reason, I thought it was a brilliant idea to start a relationship at the beginning of COVID. So it was going to be make or break if we did. You know? <laughs> Luckily, it's been make. You know. Um, there you go. But yeah, so I. Um, like I said, I grew up in the church, and so I, I have always known who, like, God was and sort of had a relationship with him. Um, you know, it was kind of the type of relationship where it's like your parents say, we're going to church on Sunday. You know, you just, you go to church, you go through the motions, and, like, I would pray to God, and but there was never really, like, it was more of a relationship that my parents had, and I kind of just, like, came alongside them and, and did that. Um, so... And um, when I got into high school, I I didn't know many people because I went to private school up until that point. Um, so um, I was coming into a public school where I didn't really have any friends and I just wanted to like fit in. Um, so I kind of started, you know, getting involved with the wrong crowds, um, just trying to fit in and, and um, made a lot of bad choices. Um, and I ended up getting into a relationship <clears throat> at the end of my senior year um, with a guy that um, was a huge stoner. And then I um, started getting into that as well. Um, and it was a very, very toxic relationship. It was very manipulative. Um, I even moved out of town for him because he had burned so many bridges here and you do a lot of stupid things for love. Um, And so I I moved out of town um, for a few months and and realized how how toxic it was. And then um, the, like my, my, my drug use got a lot um, heavier and I just became extremely depressed and didn't really know what to do with my life. I had left an amazing job um, for him. And so I finally kind of came to my senses a little bit and, and came, moved back to Ojai and was lucky enough to, to get uh, back into the job I have now. And I was still dating this guy and um, he continued to um, persuade me to, to use drugs and would say that if you love me, you'll you'll use these and and do this and it's going to make us closer. And, um, so yeah, I got into a very, very toxic just life for about five years, um, where I had absolutely no relationship with the Lord. Um, I had kind of a strained relationship with my parents. Um, and so finally it, it got to the point where I just would look in the mirror and I didn't like who I was looking at. Um, And so, um, finally after five years, um, ended things. And after that, I was just kind of like a shell of a person. He had taken a lot from me and, um, I was, I was super depressed and, um, trying to get clean from, from the drugs that I was using regularly. Um, and so about a year or so after, you know, I was, I was trying to find, figure out who I was and was still trying to see my, figure out my worth in, um, figure out my worth in who I was. Um, and 
Uh, so I would, I would go to, to men for that validation. Um, and, and would leave even more, uh, depressed and low than before. Um, and then in 2017, I had attended a music festival, um, in Las Vegas where, uh, a mass shooting had happened. Um, and that is kind of when my life got flipped upside down. <clears throat> I, you know, while it was happening, I was just praying. Um, I was like, Lord, just get me out of this and, and I'll give my life back to you. Um, all while I was drunk. Um, and it just kind of rocked me that, you know, I was able to <clears throat> survive this, this, um, event and then I came back, I got back to Ojai and it was like, everyone's still living the, their same life. You know, I still have to keep moving forward. I can't let this event um, stop me from living. So for a while, I, I was um, I was pretty depressed and I, I think I laid in bed for about a month, um, just not really knowing what to do. Yeah. Um, and I was still kind of, stuck in the party partying world because it you know it was all I really knew and it's where I had all my friends um and I would still I'd start I started going to church more however I didn't come back to redemption um for a while because I knew too many people and I knew that they knew my story and knew what I had been doing and so I wasn't, I wasn't ready to feel judged. Small town. Bus. It's yeah. Word. And so I hopped around to a few churches, and I just never felt home. Um, I just felt very like by myself, and and um, didn't feel really welcomed. And so I finally, um, you know, <laughs> brought up the courage to get, go back to redemption, and um, it just it felt. I yeah, walked in the doors, and I just felt like I was at home again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's like I walked in and Pastor Ron saw me and gave me the biggest hug. And, and it just felt very, <clears throat> very good. Um, um, however, I was still kind of like Sundays I'd go to church. And then, you know, Monday through Friday, I was still kind of living a kind of crazy life. Um, was still looking for validation from men um, that left me very empty. Um, and so I tried to get recharged on Sundays. Um and then eventually it kind of just like clicked. It was like, you, this is not the life you need to be living. You need to give yourself fully to the, back to the Lord if you want to move, make any progress in your life. Yeah. Um, and so um, I, the opportunity came up to go on a mission trip to Columbia. Um, and I jumped on it because I was like, I need to get out of Ojai. Like, Ojai yeah. doesn't seem to be doing anything for me right now. Um, so uh, we went to Columbia, and it was like the most amazing experience I had ever had. And and I was never one of those people that really liked kids all that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the reason I was like going, because I was like trying to see, figure out, I, I can make a difference in someone's life, you know, and I just needed to find some sort of, bigger calling for myself. Um, And so we went there and it was like, I think those kids made more of an impact on my life than maybe I did in theirs. You know, it's even though we didn't speak the same language, I have never felt so much love. And it was the unconditional love. It wasn't like a love with um, something attached to it, you know? And so that just kind of flipped my world around. And it was just like, I came back from that. So recharged and like on fire for the Lord and, um, I started trying to get back involved and um, in stuff at the church. I started um, becoming part of the youth group, um, and and I was just so excited. And but I still felt very like there was something missing. And I had been single at this point for like five years, and I was just I had come to the point where I was like okay with being single. You know, it's like in the back of my head, I was like, okay, there's someone out there for me. I just don't know who it is. And I don't know when he's coming, but there's someone out for, there for me. But I'm okay. If the Lord wants me to be single, then I'll be single. Um, 
And so that was like for another year, I was just, I was single and it was, I was okay with it. Um, but then I, I, I came to a breaking point, I think at the beginning, the end of last year, beginning of this year, um, that I was just like on my knees weeping that I was like, I have given my life back to you. I've been living my life for you and, and I'm still alone. You know, I, I have these wants and these needs to be a wife and a mother and like, I'm still by myself. Um, and I think it was literally the next day that I walked into our young adults group and Josiah was sitting on the couch and I was like, oh, hey, I know you. Um, (laughs) Josiah and I uh, have known each other since we were little kids because his dad was the pastor at, um, CLC. And so, and I had a huge crush on him growing up. And so I was like, oh, hello there stranger and so um I just I kind of got you know butterflies in my stomach I walked when I walked in that door and I was like this is um a face I haven't seen in 15 years and um we kind of just started out as uh you know going to lunch as friends kind of catching up on the last 15 years of our lives which a lot has happened for both of us um and then kind of shortly after that we started you know dating Um, and then, yeah, like I said, uh, we started our relationship a month before COVID hit and, um, I had become very independent and so trying to figure out how I'm going to like possibly spend a lot of time with this person that I haven't, I don't know that well, um, was a, a big transition for me, um, trying not to be selfish with my time and, um, and so we, yeah, we started dating and it, it kind of fast-tracked our relationship because we did have so much time together and it was not like it wasn't time where you just like go to the movies or like go out to dinner it was like one-on-one time where we like had to talk about some serious things and what our like intentions were in this you know I made it pretty clear at the beginning of this relationship because I'm 27 and and I said you know I've been through a lot of bad relationships and I'm not willing to to waste any more time Um, so I told him my intentions, you know, um, and his were pretty much the same, um, because this was his, this would, he had recently gotten divorced about a couple years ago and, and he wanted to move on. He wanted to be married and have kids. And, and so we were both on the same, you know, wavelength when it came to that. Um, so it did, it fast tracked our relationship a lot, but it it made us have a lot of very good conversations that needed to happen that I'd always been afraid to have with men because it would scare them off. Um, Mm -hmm. so it was a, you know, breath of, uh, fresh air, you know, to have uh, these conversations with him and like him agree. Um, so yeah, so we were dating for about six months and then we got engaged and so now we're on our way to getting married in March. And yeah, that's kind of my, my story. Awesome. Well, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's one of the cool things that I, I mentioned this the first take of our podcast, but one of the cool things is like, you know, that I, you mentioned in that was that you had kind of came to the point where even though you still were longing for mm-hmm. relationship and yeah. you still were longing for um, those things, you kind of came to the point, you're like, you know what, God, if, if I'm called to be single, that's fine. Yeah. And I, I, not that I think that that's like something we should strive to just be okay with being single, but I do think it's like often when we finally just surrender, you know, and just let God be God Mm -hmm. is when God will finally come, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of come through for us. Mm -hmm. And, um, because I think for, for, for a lot of the times, you know, God's looking for us to surrender to Him. Yeah. And then I think that even that that heart, that, that humility that that takes to do that yeah. is also part of the reason that thing that prepares us to be married. Right. Uh, cool. And so it's, it's, it's cool. But mm-hmm. Karina, uh, you have a, uh, a much different story with relationships and uh, through marriage and divorce and dating and, and all of that stuff. So just tell us a little bit about you. Uh, kind of your journey to, to get to where you are today with your three beautiful children. Uh, what's what's the what's the deal? Um, I 
dated a lot in, um, that's not even really true, right? Like I dated one guy for eighth, ninth, and 10th grade. And then I, um, kind of dated around after that for a little while, but not too long. I mean, I was ma dating the guy that I married when I was 19. So, yeah. uh, we dated for one year. We were engaged for two, um, and yeah. And then we were married for nine years, almost 10 years. And then now I'm divorced. <laughs> now I'm here. But I think that, you know, I think I was attracted to him at first and because, because he, up to that point, I had just dated crappy guys. Yeah. I don't want to say it like that because I feel yeah. like it makes it sound like that's how I feel about guys, which is not true. But up to that point, that's how, who I had dated. And so um, I think finding... Joe, uh, he was like a nice guy who came from a good Christian family, and so did I, and he liked me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I thought, well, yeah, of course not. Why not? Yeah. Um, but obviously, I mean, from someone who's been married to someone who is married, marriage is sometimes really hard. Yeah. Um, and it comes with a lot of complications, and it comes with a lot of uh, different personalities. Yeah. And I think that there, obviously, we both brought luggage, you know, baggage into, like, into the relationship. Right. <clears throat> and I think that with that baggage came things we should have worked out prior and didn't. And I, th if that, if we had looked at that baggage beforehand, maybe things would have been different, you know? Sure. Either we would have been able to work it out together and then went into marriage in a healthier spot or yeah. maybe not have gotten married, you know, either yeah. way. Um, I think there was some room for things to be worked out prior that yeah. we didn't. Right. Uh, so because of that, I think there were a lot of different issues, porn, adultery, um, that ultimately have led us to this point now where yeah. I'm single I'm single, I'm divorced, I have three kids, and, um, but I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, I like that you bring up, you know, kind of the baggage that we all bring in, and, you know, the experiences that we have um, as individuals have play a huge part in the way that we function as in, in married couples, you know? And so that kind of leads me to my, my point I wanted to bring up is like, I think that a lot of times the greatest challenges that come with relationships and this, I think this one issue really speaks to all the biggest reasons why couples get divorced. And the number one um, re cause of divorce in this country today is fi over finances, over money. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that this speaks to that, that. I think the biggest reason why couples struggle with finances, there's two. They, number one, they have their diff have different personalities. One's a saver, one's a spender. Yeah. In almost every marriage, you got one of each. In ours, I'm the spender, Emily's the saver. <laughs> you know? Uh, and so we almost every marriage you got you got a spender, you got a saver. And that inherently isn't the issue with finance in the context of finances, that inherently isn't the issue. Because there is validity to saving and there's validity to spending, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's not that those are the problems, but the problem is that when it's not talked about, when it's not addressed, when when those two different personalities, when you can't bring them together right. in a healthy way to kind of to, to use the positives of both of those personality traits to, to, to find a good balance, a good middle ground, mm -hmm. a good common ground, that's when it breaks. Mm -hmm. And I think that... That really speaks to a lot of the reasons why marriages fail. There are a lot of reasons why relationships fail, and and even even in friendships and stuff, this is true. That um, it's really difficult to be a single person who you've got to worry about you, and you know your crap. You know your positive traits. You know you know how you like to deal with your money. You know how you like to you know, with the friends you like to hang out with and the, you know, all the different aspects of your life, it, it's just you. Mm -hmm. But when you get married, you know, the, the calling of God and of, of scripture is to, as two that become one. Mm -hmm. 
And so now all of a sudden I've got to take somebody else that thinks differently than me, that has different habits than me, that has a completely different personality, that has different opinions, that has different fa- different a different kind of family, all those different things and try to merge them into your life and become one with that person. Mm-hmm. And that is a, a very difficult thing, but it's also the beauty of marriage. It's the beauty of marriage because because we are, I think, by nature, incomplete people. Right. You know, the, the classic old saying, you complete me. Right. I think that that's true. I think that Emily, in a lot of ways, completes me. Because I think I'm like the, I'm like the outgoing, opinionated, loudmouth, you know, like... Like that's that's kind of my thing. I'm the spender. I'm the wanting to go out and do stuff. I'm all that. And Emily's kind of the more reserved, the more quiet, but also the more I think the more humble. I think the more um, she, I think a lot of times she's able to assess situations with, with a lot less emotion, mm-hmm. you know. And so that really balances me out because I'm a high emotion, you know, like wear my heart on my sleeve. Like if anybody wants to know how I'm doing, you just ask and I'll tell you everything you want to know. <laughs> and uh, and I think that Emily it brings a lot of, of, of balance in my life, um, but it's very difficult. And I think, like Hannah, you know, you and Josiah yeah. are very different. Yeah. Uh, I know you both very well, yeah. and you guys are very different people. And I think mm-hmm. with you guys, it's probably the opposite, where you're kind of like me, and yeah. you're the more independent and the more outgoing, and Josiah mm-hmm. is kind of the more reserved. And yeah. but you know, how does how does that kind of work like in your dating and in your engagement, yeah. and now leading into marriage? You know, how is that kind of working for you guys and yeah, for for the longest time when I was like thinking about a partner, I was like, I need someone that's gonna be able to keep up with me, that's going to be able to like be as social as I am, that's gonna just kind of be able to like tell me how it is and like speak their mind. And um, Josiah is a lot more reserved than I am, um, and I didn't think that that was who I was gonna need in a partner. Um, but when we started dating, it was kind of like he he is he's a lot more reserved and, and a, lo- a lot quieter and, and sometimes there'd be moments of silence and when when there's silence I like get very anxious because I'm like oh something's wrong and, yeah. and and so I was always like for the first couple months of our relationship I was like are you mad at me and he's like no not at all <laughs> and I was like oh well you're quiet he's like yeah I just you know I'm listening to you and I was yeah. like oh okay <laughs> I was like well am I talking you know so it was just kind of he when it came to the social aspects of things he he takes a step back because he knows like that's where I like thrive um um, because I think that if we were both the type that needed to be in in the spotlight there would be a lot more issues um and he has he's taught me how to be patient and to when it when you know it's time to sit back and just listen you know and um, so that was a, a big thing that we had to kind of work through. Um, and then when it came to, to finances, I, I have been so independent and um, with my money. And so when it came to the talk about like once we got engaged of like opening a bank account and getting credit cards, I was just like kind of very like not for it. I was like, well, it's my money and I made it. I worked hard. <clears throat> um, and then we kind of started getting into our like premarital counseling and I was like oh this is like getting real and like I probably should reevaluate my like mindset when it comes to this because it's like when like you said when when you get married like two become one you know and so um yeah it was just kind of it one day it kind of clicked and I was like oh this is all ours you know it's just just because I was the one that made this money it's still ours because ultimately we're trying to build this family Mm -hmm. And come together and create something new. Um, and so learning to not be so selfish when it came to, to my money um, has been a big challenge. Um, and then something like recently that like we've kind of been, been working on is just kind of learning to, uh, when we're home, to be like very present. He's yeah. always very present, but me, I like... I bring work home with me and like let it bug me and so it's been us learning kind of how to like leave that at work and like come when we come together we just like kind of try to fill each other up um from the the long day um 
but yeah, so it's just, it's been a lot. And I think that I've also, for him, I think that I've brought him out of his shell because he was very, um, he wasn't, he didn't have as much confidence, I think, when we started dating. Um, and he was like afraid to like offend me or like make me mad. And, and now it's like we can have healthy conversation uh, without upsetting each other and, um, which has been great because I'm all about communication. Like communication is the biggest thing for me. Um, if that was a love language, that would be my top. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's been, it's been a, a lot of adjustment, um, and trying to kind of get out of my old mindset. Um, but it has, it's been, it's been good because I think we both balance each other out very well. So yeah, no, I think that that's true. And like, I, for me, when I look at couples that, you know, get together, because I always say like Redemption Young Adults, if you're single, interested in mingling, it's a great place to come. We, we, we're, oh my we gosh. Make, we make, when do you uh, say that? We make, dream, we make dreams come true. Uh, <laughs> Hannah, and jo- Hannah and Josiah are a testament. Oh so, my. Uh, but, you know, I think that 7 p.m. when Tuesday I see... Nights. <laughs> I've, I've led, you know, young adults ministries at multiple different churches now. And I think that, like, I've seen a lot of couples get together and a lot of couples um, not work out. And mm-hmm. both in the context of marriage and in just dating. And I think often, like, when I see a couple get together that seem very similar to each other, it starts, it, it scares me. Because I, I think that often, often that doesn't work. Yeah. You know? Right. And, uh, this is part of the reason why, you know, like a lot of, um, you know, pastors, like people who are in ministry, like high, high functioning leaders and stuff. A lot of times people like that don't have spouses that are the same way because it just it's hard, that's hard to make it work. Like you said, mm-hmm. you know, for people who, who kind of need the need the attention, need the spotlight more, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard to to reconcile that with another yeah. person. And so it's um it's definitely, I think, I think the majority of the time, God wants us to be with someone who's different from us. Yeah. But the challenge is that that's hard for us to swallow as right. human beings <laughs> because that's harder. Yeah. You know, it's more difficult and uh, there's so many, so many challenges that come from having a different personality. But like we were, like we were just talking about, uh, that I think that that's a lot of times how we uh, become better people, you know, mm-hmm. and Absolutely. like I always use this example, like. I don't think that Emily would necessarily, I don't think, I think if, when we moved here, you know, if, if I wasn't the way that I am, where I'm social and outgoing and, and very like wanting to go do things and stuff, I'm not sure if she would have any friends mm-hmm. moving from across the, you know, to a, from a completely different state, being mm-hmm. in a totally new context, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know if we would have any friends. I don't know if she would be hanging out with you two all the time yeah. and have a lot of friends because she is that more reserved personality. Right. And if I didn't have her, there is absolutely no way that I would be doing what I'm doing right now in mm-hmm. ministry. Yeah. I would have collapsed by now and probably be like in a mental hospital or something <laughs> because, because I, it's just <clears throat> that grounding yeah. and that um, consistent level-headed nature that right. she has to be able to assess the situation from a from a much less emotional Absolutely. and and kind of um, chaotic mindset place mm-hmm. is what has kept me going. Yeah. And so um, so we really do complete each other. But mm-hmm. like you know, Karina, as far as like you know your marriage and now being divorced, you know, how did that work for you guys? And also, do you think that that played that this conversation played any part in Finances. why it didn't work? Is that what you're talking about? But no, just just like the different personality types. And, oh. You know, like being different people. And do you think that that played a part in why it didn't work? Do you th- and also just what's your kind of experience with that in your marriage? I... I think that... Yeah, I think that different personality types obviously played a role. I think at the beginning, I mean, if I can like slide it back to finances for a minute, you know, I was kind of in Emily's spot, you know, where I didn't work. I stayed home and I um, raised the family and that was the decision that we had made together um, to kind of live that paycheck to paycheck life so that uh, so that I could. um, 
and it was just our prerogative. You know, it was just our decision. It was just our choice. And, but I don't think that when I think about finances, I think that we had an open, <clears throat> an open communication enough that, that, that was not a factor right. in our marriage as much as it probably should have been because yeah. we were so poor. Um, but, <laughs> 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 but yeah, I think we had open communication enough that again, it just wasn't a factor as much. I do think that when it comes to different personality types, I think that he and I were very, very different. I was more like you guys. I was more outgoing and um, outspoken, and he was not. He was more reserved and more... He was the saver. I was the spender. And... Spenders are more fun. (laughs) Definitely more fun. Raise your hand if you're a spender. (laughs) Um, But I think... Yeah, I think it plays a role, but I think more so than our personalities. I think it was, like I said earlier, just our baggage that we brought in. There were, like, emotional stunting. Yeah. You know, and and that desire to want more out of your spouse than that person can give. Sure. I think that that was our biggest factor in all of it. And I don't think it was so much... A personality flaw or a personality trait as much as it was the inability to keep up with the other spouse as far as our expectations yeah. of each other. And I know that it's like kind of taking it a different direction, but I think when we when we get married, I I mean you got married pretty young too, you know? Yeah. And so did I. And so I think, I I don't know if that's the way it is for you guys, but I know that for me, I expected a lot more out of my husband than he could give because he wasn't Jesus. Right. You know, he, I think when you get married young, you think that like, and maybe that's the case when you get older too, but that because that person is supposed to complete you, then they should fulfill all those things that you have in your mind of what a husband or a wife should be. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case, you know? No one actually, like, takes the place of what Jesus can do in your life. No. Yeah. And I think that that was a huge factor. Probably the biggest factor for Joe and I was just that there was a lot of expectation for what could, what should have been done, what that role looked like, what even unspokenly of what that role is supposed to look like. And we didn't measure up to that and then found different ways to cope with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I think that that leads to a really good point that I think another reason why marriages fail, another reason why, like, um, relationships fail, and even friendships, like, we, I mean, this is something I have firsthand experience of with different people and, and watching this happen, And uh, but I think that a lot of the reason why relationships fail is because, you know, we are looking for other people to fulfill something in us that they are not designed to fulfill. Right. We're looking for other people, like you say, to be Jesus to us. Right. And <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, that that is an impossible thing for people to do because people are people and God is God. Right. And so I think that, you know, we, I think this leads to kind of the way I wanted to wrap it up today with like the final topic, but just... I think that we are looking for something in a spouse that only God can fulfill. So we have unrealistic expectations of that person. So, I, But I, I think that that speaks to like how ultimately we have to have that strong relationship with God. You know, we have to really be um, in step with him, walking with him. We have to, that has to be a more important relationship to us than our marriage yeah. mm-hmm. and, or than our friendship or whatever it is. And until we are secure in that, mm-hmm. you know, until we are, are grounded in that, it's going to be very difficult, I think, for us to, um, to succeed in any relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that kind of leads to like the final thing I wanted to discuss is just, you know, what are the keys to 
a healthy marriage. And I know that there's tons of different things we could talk about and there's, you know, I don't want to get into like all the little things because you can go read a book. Like there's yeah. plenty of <laughs> stuff talking about it keeps you healthy marriage. But I want to talk about it just from the standpoint of like, you know, for, for the three of us sitting here today mm-hmm. with, you know, and again, like, like you said, Emily and I got married very young mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't really share anything about us, but like it was, she was uh, 18, I was 21. Um, we were very young. Uh, we had been, at that point, we had been dating for several years. So like we started dating when Emily was 15, I was like 17. So like we have, we had really been together a long time but but got married very young and mm-hmm. so like you know a lot of us we we definitely both had dating experience before mm-hmm. and had you know had a, a other experience with other people but i think that you know really for our entire growing up and really becoming adults was mm-hmm. spent together yeah mm-hmm. and like you say karina that that was in some ways good but it also that was difficult because uh-huh. We developed baggage together, you know, like, like yeah. we, we developed baggage together. We, not only do we bring baggage in, but we, we, we created it together, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and in our dating relationship, you know, mm-hmm. and, and so going into marriage, that was, that was difficult. And, um, and it's something that like, all the time we have to deal with kind of yeah. the bad decisions that we had made and different uh, aspects of kind of us getting it wrong in a lot of ways growing up and, mm-hmm. and then again the personalities but but like you know today as you guys sit here you know and Hannah on the cusp of marriage and mm-hmm. both of us with with marriage experience and um, you know as you sit here today what do you think like if you could give like a maybe a one sentence or a couple sentence like answer like what some what do you think the most important thing for somebody who's listening today who's like, I, I want to get married or I am married and I'm struggling, what's kind of like like one, you know, main thing that you think that they could focus on to kind of have a healthy marriage or a healthy relationship, even maybe a friendship? <laughs> you just asked people that talk all the time to give you a one, an- one sentence. I know. Answer. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Maybe two or maybe two or three. <laughs> um, I think first and foremost, God needs to be at the center of, of your relationship. Um, I think that I'm not going to give you one a sentence answer. Um, <laughs> I think that um, that was the biggest thing for me was um, I would sit in church and like look next to me, and I was hoping so badly I would have someone that was running the race with me, you know, yeah. um, trying and so someone that yeah that they they are, their heart is for the lord just as much as you are right. you know um, that's i think the biggest thing for a successful marriage hmm. yeah um i would say i mean my first thought was ministry right mm-hmm. like you want someone who like even if they're not in ministry with you to at least back each other up in ministry mm-hmm. you sure. know mm-hmm. um someone who is God centered. Like Hannah said, you know, I guess that kind of goes along with ministry Yeah, Yeah. communication. Yeah. There's like things that, uh, aren't easy to talk about, Mm -hmm. you know, are kind of awkward to talk about. And Hannah kind of spoke on that for a minute, you know, Mm -hmm. that now there's those healthy relationships that maybe weren't in the beginning, Mm -hmm. but man, those are super, super important. And I think even when you don't think they're important, those conversations are important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and not like, hey, I'm not to give your partner like a, a rundown of like what you're doing every step of the day, but to talk about the things that are important mm-hmm. and the things that aren't important, the things that are awkward, the things that are not awkward, you know, whatever the yeah. case may be, mm-hmm. to just discuss everything with them mm-hmm. because that's your person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I think everyone thinks they have a person, but your person is the person you end up with. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the the one for you is the one that you choose. Right. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I always have loved that because, like, I think we got a lot of single people that sit around waiting for the one. Mm-hmm. And uh, as much as I do think, like, I do think God has ordained all of us, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. a person. I do think that God also gives us a brain to choose that person. Yeah. And so, but, I, you know, so communication, like, so let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. What... If you take the other person completely out of it, you know, and you and even let's take the personality types out of it, because some of us are, are more apt to talk, 
Mm-hmm. What? But when we talk about, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's not a coincidence that the three of us here doing this podcast all happen to be not the passive. <laughs> ones. Um, but when, okay, so to have healthy communication, mm-hmm. yeah, not just talking and right. not just arguing, but healthy communication. What do you have to have as an individual in order to communicate in a healthy way? Coachability, mm. humility. Yeah, you know, being able to. Um, Sit and listen mm-hmm. without res- without responding right away, but mm-hmm. to yeah. sit and listen, um, to be able to be molded and and self recognition, yeah. you know, to hear your partner and to say, oh man, like maybe that is something that I need to work on, or mm-hmm. oh, you know, when I do this, my partner responds mm-hmm. this way. Yeah. Why, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, like what am I doing that is triggering that person, or what mm-hmm. am I doing that? is hurting that person even unintentionally, right. you know, um, and then to have those communication skills and to sit and have those conversations, even like, like we said, even when it's hard, even mm-hmm. when it's awkward, mm-hmm. even like for things like sex, for things like um, addiction, mm-hmm. for things like, you know, even just day-to-day things that mm-hmm. you find in your partner's personality that either bug you or that don't line up with scripture or, right. you know, that are consistent, not like, Hey, I hate the way you brush your teeth. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, maybe that could be helpful, but maybe it might not be, yeah. you know, maybe that's something you need to work on, but yeah. Yeah. You know, recognizing first self recognition, 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 mm-hmm. and being able to, to hear and being able to know like, oh man, that's something that I need to work on. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that bugs my partner and that I need to work on and not being too proud to not work on it. Right. Well, that's Mm -hmm. just who I am. That's crap. Yeah. (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) no, it's not just who you are because you can change change like for, like with help from the Holy Spirit, right? Like with Mm -hmm. help from the Lord, you can, you can change and mold. We always do. So it's whether or not you're willing to change in order to better the kingdom, because isn't that what marriage is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like a it's a it's a picture to others of the Godhead, right? right? Mm-hmm. And so, how are what is your picture doing? And not in a false way, not in a I step out and everything looks perfect kind of way, not in a we go to church with our masks on kind of way, <laughs> but in a in our home with the doors closed, yeah. even when no one else is around, we're still a picture of what. That looks like because God's ordained it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And I, you know, with communication, I think it's like a lot of what, you know, you're talking about comes into like, I think that talkers need to listen Mm -hmm. and listeners need to talk. Mm -hmm. And again, that's counter to our wiring. Mm -hmm. Talkers talk. Mm-hmm. Listeners, listen. Right. <laughs> and that's that's the reason why we, as you say, like, I'm I'm a talker, I'm a listener. You know, mm-hmm. we've, we've all talked about that before. Mm-hmm. The reason why we do that is because we, that's how we're wired. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So we have to go against our natural tendency, our natu- the way that we're naturally wired in order to, you know, try to push ourselves towards a healthier way of communicating and a healthier marriage. Yeah. And it's something that's that's difficult. But again, I think that all of this, everything that we've talked about today, and we could go on and on and on, and maybe we'll have to do a part two and, you know, talk more about some of this stuff. But, you know, I think all of this that we've discussed comes back to the, the principle that, you know, what, what the, the first thing that Hannah said when I asked, like, what's a healthy, you know, marriage, you said it's got to be centered around God. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's easier for us to say that yeah. and because it's what you say. Right. But what does that tangibly look like? Mm-hmm. What does it mean for a relationship to be centered around God? I think that it's something that has been a work in process, a progress, you know, for us. Um, because... Um, as much as that was our, our goal, um, we're not perfect. Yeah. Um, we make mistakes. Um, but 
when we do make those mistakes, making sure that we, we come together and like ask for help in yeah. those, in those trials and those, those problems and, and ask for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also like we, Josiah and I have been trying to make it a regular thing that we pray together every morning, even though we don't live together. Um, we make sure to pray together just because so we start our day um, on the right foot um, yeah, mm-hmm. and and, you know, blessing our day and, and making sure that that we know where why we're together. Yeah. You know, the only reason we're together is because it was the Lord's will. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, so that's, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. I think it's just being ministry minded. I think it's just being kingdom minded, mm-hmm. you know, like together and what that looks like for your home. I, I think it looks different for every home. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that, you know, I love that you guys pray in the mornings and I'm sure that you and Emily have your own thing, you know. Mm-hmm. I think God, that there's sanctity in marriage. I think that, um, I don't know. I think it sounds silly coming from me sometimes just because of my circumstances. And um, I don't know. I think that it, I, I'm still an advocate for it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm still right. an advocate for it and I still recognize the sanctity in it. And I still, um, I still think that, I mean, I, I think divorce is broken, Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, and I think that it, it shows a broken picture yeah. of what, uh, God intended for marriage, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it's living out life kingdom-minded mm-hmm. together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it really comes down to. Mm-hmm. Boiling it all the way down, that's mm-hmm. what it comes down to. Yeah. So if you take... I'm, I'm fishing here, but yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll land the plane. If, sure. if, uh, Will we? if you take <laughs> the relationship completely out of it, what does it mean to live kingdom-minded? For... Well, so I mean, a, like as a person, right? But I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a good person to ask that question to currently because I'm single, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been married, and so I can recognize the the role that it plays, right, in being kingdom minded together. But I think as a single person, and I obviously we all have been single at one point. Yeah. Um. I think now it just means for me personally living out every day in God's will, Mm -hmm. whatever that may be for that day. And to wake up, I mean, that's my thing is that first thing I do when I wake up, I like give it to God, right? Yeah. Because I want this day to be in his will, period. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever he has that comes across my path, I don't want to be blinded by those, but to those things. I want to help the people that he wants me to help, or I want to be bold in the places that he wants me to be bold, and I want to be humble and listen in the places yeah. where he needs me to be humble and listen. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to ask, too, is to both of you. Like, what, okay, so, you know, living in God's will every day as yeah. a daily thing. Mm-hmm. What do you think God's will is for you as an individual person? You know, what's God's will for you to live? Not, not, I'm not talking about your calling, I'm not talking about the big thing, I'm talking about. Today, what's God's will for you today in terms of going through your life? What, what do you think God wants you to, what do you think God wants you to do? What do you think God wants you to be like? And I think what you just said, like humility, mm-hmm. uh, I think that honesty, I think that um, integrity, yeah. I think that having, being a person of, of character, yeah, you know, and all that is truly I think we we get as Christians really get caught up in like, what's God's calling for my life, mm-hmm. and like, what right. am I gonna do, and what's you know like am I you know like all the different things. I think we 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 get caught up in this big vision of like, you know, like life with God. When ultimately, I think God is a lot more concerned about what we do today. Yeah. About the decisions that we make today to do the small things right, because the small things are not small things. Right. The reason why marriages fail is because individual people don't have integrity. Mm-hmm. They don't have strength of character. Mm-hmm. They 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 don't. Um, they're not honest with each other. Yeah. They're not. Uh, they're not focused on being humble and and communicating in a, from a place of right. humility. And so that 
ultimately is what makes or breaks a marriage. And the reason why I, I, I wanted to kind of bring that up and you know have that be our, our closing point is that I think that it's so easy for us to blame everybody else. Yeah. And this is not just about marriage. This is just relationships and it's just life in general. Yeah. It's so easy for us to put put everything on the other person and not take personal accountability and responsibility for our problems Mm -hmm. and for our lack of the will of God in our life. Absolutely. Because the will of God, like, yeah, God might will for you to go and reach this homeless person today or might go and might might will for you to have that conversation with a coworker. That's what we always talk about. Mm -hmm. God might do that, but no question, regardless of which day it is, God always wills for you to have integrity and to have strength of character and to be kind and to be humble. Yeah, and joy. Yeah. To choose joy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Even when life sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And (laughs) all of that is what builds healthy people. It's what builds God-honoring people. It's what builds God-centered people. Yeah. And on that foundation is where a God-centered and a Mm God-honoring marriage comes Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say that you have to get all of that together before you get married. Yeah. That's not what we're trying to say. We're mm-hmm. trying because Emily and I certainly did not have all that together and we still don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's a it's a mindset thing. It's a decision thing to say, you know what? I want to be the kind of person mm-hmm. that is going to to honor the will of God for my life to be a good person. Right. To be a person that lives it, you know, with with the the truth of Scripture fresh in my spirit, right? Mm-hmm. And that's where, out of that decision, it's not again, it's not something that you that you're ever probably going to get perfect, mm-hmm. but it's a decision that you make to 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 shoot for that and strive for that. I, when when you're talking about it, I just keep thinking about you know the fact that I'm not the same person that I was even a year and a half ago, yeah. right? You know, and not just kind of. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm really, really not, yeah. you know, and I've known Josh well for a little over a year and I've known Hannah now for a little less than a year, mm-hmm. but just the difference that it has made. And I think it's hard to recognize, like, obviously I don't condone divorce, even though I am, right. you know, um, and I can recognize why that happened and where it came from and the brokenness that led to it. But I also am grateful, sad that it had to that that's the deciding factor. But grateful that it it happened and it was the, it was what pushed me to be serious about having that relationship with God. Yeah. I'd always had it, but was I serious about it? Right. You know, I. I knew of him but I didn't know him Mm -hmm. and to have that desire and that drive for the will of God you know to know him to have that relationship with him I can be grateful in it I can choose joy even in those circumstances Mm -hmm. and even in that that I'm grateful that I'm not Mm -hmm. the same person that I was I'm grateful that I take my faith seriously Mm -hmm. that I take that relationship with God seriously yeah yeah um and I just think like I'm yeah. just grateful for yeah. redemption, right? Like right. Yeah. for that restoration in mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Shameless I think that's plug. <laughs> shameless plug. I think that's kind of where I was I'm at too. It was just um learning to not be ashamed of your past. Um Amen. and 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 you don't even know how many people you can <clears throat> reach with speaking about your past. You know, for a long time, I tried to kind of hide what my life had been like before I came back um, to the church um, because I didn't want to be judged. I was so ashamed. Um, And I think I kind of talked about this on Tuesday, Young Adults. It was just growing up in the 90s. It was like you are a perfect little family on Sundays. But then like the rest of the week, it's absolute chaos yeah and if you make one wrong mistake like you're done and so it's it's learning to to be able to talk about your past and show the redemption story you know and realize that like no matter what you've gone through in in years back who you are now and how you're glorifying god and your your current life is the most important thing you know i think that um Josiah's divorced. 
Um, and I think that that's something that like he's held a lot of, of shame for. But learning, you know, how he was married, it didn't work out. Learning how to go into a new relationship and marriage and how to make it work. Mm-hmm. You know, he there's things he learned from that marriage mm-hmm. that are he's not going to make those same mistakes in, in his next marriage. Mm-hmm. And, and giving those insecurities and those doubts up to the Lord is the most important thing. Because no matter if you think you're perfect at, at relationships or not, you always have downfalls. And so learning to be okay with talking about those downfalls and giving them up to the Lord is the absolute most important thing. Mm-hmm. And realizing yeah. none of us are perfect. Yeah. And and giving grace when yeah. grace is due. Yeah. So. And I think that, like, that's that's so true that, like, that is redemption. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is the gospel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, you know, creating your, your marriage and Josiah's marriage and, like, mm-hmm. there was a lot of brokenness involved there was a lot of sin involved there was a lot of real failure involved yeah on on both parts and it's all and that's how Mm -hmm. and and so like it it didn't it's not like it just ended because it just didn't work out there was real issues with with individual people there was sin there was failure Mm -hmm. but in that brokenness Mm -hmm. god didn't leave you there and he's he's turning it for his glory yeah and that is redemption. That's yeah. why that 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 name is on the front of our church right now. Right. Yeah. Is because we as a as a community of believers as a church believe in that principle that Absolutely. like we this is what we're about. Yeah. Right? We want broke. We want to be a hospital for broken people. Mm-hmm. And and you know we don't always get that right, and we don't always you know truly like like I think do that as well as we could as a community as a church as believers as individuals. But ultimately, that is the gospel, mm-hmm. and it's the beauty of of Jesus that He will meet us where we are. He will take what should be despair and ruin and life of singleness and life of of, of brokenness and life of shame and life of condemnation, and He'll take that and He will use it for His glory. And He will still give us a new and a fresh opportunity to be better and to start over and to you know all of those things. Uh, it's 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 the beauty of who he is and what he did on that cross, yeah. and so it's it's you know that's I think that that is really when in the context of marriage and relationships, mm-hmm. I just think it's it really is all about being a a good person, yeah, and being a person that honors God with the way that you live, mm-hmm. and yeah, there are times where you have to talk to your spouse and you have to. You know, we always like turn like like we need to call people out on their crap. You know, it's yeah. like yeah, sometimes you got to do that. But yeah. I think it's probably not as often as we'd like for it to be. Right, more often and than not, more it's just often our own than crap. Not, it's your own crap. <laughs> yeah, and it's and so I think both pe- both parties in any relationship, whether it's friendship or marriage or anything, if if you have that 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 conviction that I've got to make sure that I'm really in the right place with this. You know, am I am I calling someone out because I'm bitter and because I'm just mad and frustrated, or am I calling someone out because I actually feel like there's a real problem that they need to address in themselves? And right. I think more often than not, it's it's the the former. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that so I, you know, and it's but it's the beauty of grace that like we're never going to get it right, but I think yeah. that we every day is a new opportunity. So for the, for those of you who are listening to this, whether you're single or you're married or you're dating or whatever it is. Um, man, there is grace for you today, mm-hmm. and there is so much hope for your relationship. There's so much hope for uh, for your future. Like I love, you know, with Hannah's talking about about the past. Like we always mm-hmm. view the past as such a negative thing a lot of times. But like you don't have a future without your past, yeah. right? And uh, all the the things that that were your past are are the reason why you are who you are today. Mm-hmm. And so uh, just just I hope that you will you know leave listening to this with just with hope. With uh, a fresh, you know, kind of drive in your spirit to be that person of character. You know, if you're single, yeah, be the person you're looking for is looking for. Mm-hmm. And I think that what people really are looking for is good people who are genuine, mm-hmm. who are authentic, who have integrity, who are yeah. humble, who are kind. Mm-hmm. And that's really ultimately what we're called to do. And I think that that's what can build the foundation for healthy relationships. Yeah. And so um, thank you guys for joining me on the podcast today we're definitely going to do a part two where we'll get into some more things with this but 
I'm super excited to get to do this with you guys. Uh, you have any closing remarks? No closing remarks? <laughs> we love you. That's Word. Right. We do. Come to Young Adults. Young Adults, 7 Tuesday. p.m. Tuesdays. Tuesday. Shameless plug. <laughs> uh, yeah, we love you guys. Have a great week, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Redemption Podcast.